Hey guys, AJ here from The Dice Guys. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to start a series where we talk about the news that comes out from Games Workshop, mainly on the Warhammer community website. And today's talking point is going to be this symbol right here. I feel like you're going to be seeing it more and more often, and it is Warhammer Plus. Now before we get into what Warhammer Plus is, if you haven't actually gone and seen this animation, I suggest you head over to Twitch, and there was a live stream, as you can see here in the background. And these guys talk about all the exciting animations coming up. You can see them listed here. Black Talon, Iron Within, Ultra Wrath, High Lords, Broken Lance, Hammer and Bolter, Astartes 2, which I'm sure needs no introduction to anyone, Interrogator, The Exodite, Pariah Nexus, and Angels of Death. Just want to say personally, these look amazing the different styles there's everything from a cartoony style which we see on a space wars one uh, all the way up to just a black white and red which we see on i believe it's angels of death with the blood angels and then you've got pariah nexus which you will recognize if you've ever seen the ninth edition trailer with the sisters the uh ultramarines i want to say it was and the necrons having a scrap there's also things with orcs in there there's the interrogator, which I believe follows uh, an interrogator who's, uh, mm, how to describe it? If you've ever listened to Eisenhorn, um, or if you've ever listened to uh, Ravenna, I say listen through Audible, if you've read the books, if you're, if you're smarter than me, you've read. If you're dumber like me, you listen to the audiobooks while you paint. So if you've ever listened to Ravenna or Eisenhorn, you'll know it follows an inquisitor, and all inquisitors have a retinue, and one of the retinues they have is this thing here, interrogator. And this story follows a interrogator whose inquisitor has been killed. I am within, you can guess, follows the Iron Warriors, etc. etc. What is Warhammer Plus? Well, we can pretty much guess that it's going to be a subscription service. We are in 2021, and the way companies like to make money is to get you to pay them continuously each month. I think it's an issue that Games Workshop have had for a long time when you buy the models. What do you really buy then? Apart from codices, which they keep updating, how do you keep giving them money? When people build their armies up and they get to two, three, four thousand points, unless there's a big flood of new models, they don't really spend any money. Games Workshop aren't having a continuous income. Warhammer Plus is their version of, well, trying to solve that. Now, it's going to have pros and it's going to have cons. Let's start with the pros. The last few years, especially the last year, we have started to see Warhammer animation like we've never seen before. Yes, most of it was fan-made. Yes, Games Workshop have kind of either made them join GW or shut them down. Is that bad business? That's probably a chat for a different video. All I'll say on that part is it is Games Workshop's right. It is their product. Um, it is something that they own license to so when fans do create fan projects there is kind of that gray zone between using a licensed product and making money off the ad revenue on youtube do i think games workshop should have shut them down though if they don't join probably not i feel like they could deal with that a little bit better anyway let's talk about what warhammer plus is warhammer plus is more than likely going to be a subscription service do we know how much no can i guess not really. Um, if you're looking at the prices Netflix charge a month, we're then asking, are they going to be able to put out that much content to keep us <laughs> paying for the subscription? Are we not just going to subscribe, watch all the all the episodes, and then cancel? I know an issue that Netflix has, I don't know if any of you have had it at home, is I binge watch certain things, and then I just kind of unsubscribe because there wasn't enough to bring me back. Now, the advantage of having a subscription service for GW is they are going to get income, which means they should be able to put money into what we are seeing here, which means that the fan project should get more funding, which, you know, means... It, it isn't guaranteed, but should mean that they will be able to produce these faster. We're not going to be waiting two years for a starties. We should be able to get it quicker. Theoretically, that might not be the case. We also don't know how long the episodes are. They do talk in the live stream that they can range from 10 minutes upwards. 10 minutes for 10 episodes. Is it really worth 
a subscription when Astartes was putting that kind of range of content out themselves and they did have a funding page and I believe that they they made a lot of money there anyway so you have to ask yourself what kind of deal did Games Workshop offer them was it a deal was it more of if you don't join us we shut you down and then at that point what kind of creativity are these guys still going to get is the guy who made Astartes still going to be in control of the story or is Games Workshop going to chip in and say hey you can't really say that or hey add this in because we want to sell this product can you make it about this particular legion because we've got this new range of models coming out we really want people to buy those will the average person be getting warhammer plus and what does it mean for 40k yes it brings more people into 40k that's a great thing because the more people that come in for the rest of us means that there'll be more interest which means there'll be more people to play which theoretically means there'll be more events, which means there'll be more tournaments, which means there'll be more animation because the interest will be there. And hey, maybe we will get the Horace Heresy movie series. Who knows? Henry Cavill's definitely sitting there waiting to play the Emperor. So all we need now is the interest to drum up. You have to remember that when you look at book series like Lord of the Rings, um, like Game of Thrones, etc. These are wrote by one person. You have to remember that Warhammer is wrote by a collective of people with things like Dan Abner in there. And if you've actually watched an interview that was recently posted with Dan Abner, he talks about how they all get together, five or six of them, and they, they chat about the law and they discuss things that you really don't get if one person is writing a book, which to me means that this series should be very, very strong. They should have lots of creative people coming up with lots of creative ideas. Imagine what 40k could do if it had the kind of funding that Marvel does. You imagine the series you could spin off. If you've ever listened or read any of the 40k books, you will know that each Primarch, each Legion, has its own flavour, its own taste, and its own range of problems to overcome. We will be finding out in the next few weeks exactly how much Warhammer Plus is and what it means. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I'm undecided. I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys think. Will you be subscribing to this? Do you support it? Or would you rather that these animations stayed fan-made and that we didn't have to pay for them? Or do you think that paying for them will give us better quality and give us more regular animation and make GW bigger and spread Warhammer to the rest of the world? That's going to be it for this week's episode, guys. We hope you enjoyed. I'd love to hear in the comments below what your thoughts are of Warhammer Plus, of all these uh, series coming out, and which one you're most looking forward to. Myself, personally, it's probably going to either be Interrogator or the Exodite, as I do like a bit of Tau. Astartes is Astartes. We don't have to worry. It's going to be fantastic, I hope. So until next week, guys, I hope you enjoy, and we'll catch you again.